Welcome to the William Smith Interactive Map Viewer. When the viewer is first opened, there is a blank screen. To the left is a table of contents containing a stack of individual map layers. Layers can be displayed by clicking on the map name. Clicking the name again will toggle the display off. To zoom in and out of the map, use the mouse wheel or the slider at the top left of the display. Click and drag to navigate around the map display. The map extent can be reset by clicking the home button. The layer button will toggle the table of contents on and off. In addition to various versions of William Smith's 1815 map of England and Wales, the project also contains his county maps, both those published and those available in manuscript form. In order to show the county maps as continuous layers, the geology of each map has been clipped out and mosaiced. For unfinished manuscript maps, the geology has been derived from Smith's 1815 map. Generally speaking, there is a good edge match between the county geology maps, and the geology is more detailed than in the 1815 map. The combined mosaics give an impression of what a second edition of the 1815 map might have looked like. Initially, the map viewer opens with a light grey canvas. A number of topographic base maps are available from the drop down menu. These base maps can be used in conjunction with the various Smith maps. A high resolution remote sensing layer is also available. In the current view, we're looking at high resolution imagery for the Isle of Wight. In this view, we will compare and contrast two versions of William Smith's 1815 map using the Layer Swipe tool. In this demonstration, we are using the Smith P map from Nottingham University and the Smith A map from the Geological Society. As we move the swipe bar, we reveal the A map beneath the P map. Using mouse click and drag, we can navigate around the maps, showing both images simultaneously. The Layer Swipe tool can also be used in conjunction with base map layers. Here we are displaying remote sensing imagery and a spline georectified version of the William Smith P map. As we move around the map, we can see there is a good match between places in the P map and places in the modern imagery. A similar concurrence can also be seen by using John Kerry's remarkable 1796 Turnpike Roads map. The map viewer has a number of modern geological map layers, including geology from the British Geological Survey. This layer is scale dependent and will only display when zoomed in to an appropriate scale. Here it is displayed together with the P map. Clicking the circle symbol on the BGS layer will increase its transparency and allow the P map to be visible beneath it. Now clicking in the map view will select geological outcrops and display information about them. In order to make a more meaningful comparison between modern geology and Smith's geology, we have combined modern geological formations into groups which would have been more readily understandable to William Smith. These groups have been coloured using Smith's tinting technique and displayed on top of an historical style base map. Comparing this map with Smith's 1815 map shows us just how good William Smith's geological observations were. If you look at a William Smith 1815 map in detail, you'll see that although the mapmaker John Carey shows the positions of hills, there's no indication of hill shading. By using a modern hill shade, 
derived from SRTM data, we can enhance William Smith's map and give a further indication of relief. In this view, the effect is particularly striking on Salisbury Plain and along the river valleys that dissect it. Layers at the top of the table of contents are used to locate other relevant items, specifically fly-through movies, William Smith's cross-sections, modern seismic examples, other examples of interest, and dwells. To display legends for these layers, the Show Legend button is clicked. Hovering over the locations, we'll select and name the location. Clicking the location will load the relevant item. The fly-through movies shown in the map viewer have been produced by draping Smith and Carey maps on top of a digital terrain model. Esri's ArcScene software has been used to navigate through the 3D displays and subsequently generate the animations. Clicking the fly-through track will select and display the movie in the top left-hand corner of the viewer. Click the play button to start the movie. Click the right hand button for a full screen display. The locations of William Smith's magnificent panoramic cross sections can be shown on the map. Here they are shown on top of the 1815 P map. To view a section, click on the section line and the section will load in a new window. Within this window, pan and zoom tools can be used to reveal more detail. Seven regional seismic profiles prepared by Malcolm Butler are included in the map viewer. The line CV8082 is also included. This line goes to the site of the Cook's Farm coal trial. Clicking the line will display the information in a seismic viewer. The seismic viewer displays the actual seismic data in SegY, not an image, and therefore the display parameters can be modified by the user. In this layer, there are two examples of historical interest. The first is in the wheeled area, where a comparison has been made between Smith's cross-section and modern seismic. The second tells the story of the Cook's Farm coal trial in 1803. It was during this trial that Smith used his knowledge of stratigraphy to predict that coal could not possibly be found at Cook's farm. William Smith was a practical man, a working geologist. He was a surveyor, a land drainer, and also interested in exploration for coal. If he were alive today, he would certainly be interested in oil and gas exploration and fascinated by the wealth of stratigraphic information now available from wells and boreholes. By toggling the wells layer, we can view this data. Which farm in the Pool Harbour area is Britain's largest onshore oil field? Here at the Witch Farm facility, we can see a large number of development wells. Selecting a well will generate a list of formation tops, in this case many of which would be well known to William Smith. 